Hello everybody, I'm Captain Mom again. Today we'll be starting off a new topic on uh, how to find out a latitude by lower meridian altitude. But before I get down to this, let me have a recap on what we have already talked about. Latitude by meridian altitude. And these were the three possibilities we had discussed there on uh, how to go about finding out our latitudes. When this celestial body is on observer's meridian, the observer's meridian here is P, Z, Q and S. As the definition of uh, the meridian suggests, it is your great circle which is semi-great circle which is joining the two poles. So, pole is here and pole to the pole on the south. So, your meridian is P, Z, Q, S in all these cases. And when it comes the body on its daily passage, when it comes on your meridian, that as it has come here, it is said to be culminating. Now this is what we refer to as the meridian transit or meridian passage. When the body comes on a meridian, we call it as meridian passage or meridian transit. At meridian passage, LHA is 0 or 180, uh, 360. Now uh, LHA is the angle at the poles and as you can see, there is no angle being made between X and P. So at meridian passage, your LHA is 0, 0 or 360 and that is how we have been finding out the time for meridian passage. Azimuth is the angle at the zenith. Now again here you can see that, that there is no angle being formed uh, here at uh, zenith. It is 0 or 180 depending upon which way you are looking. If you are looking up, 0. When you are looking down, it is 180. Now here the latitude is greater than the declination as you can see here then the azimuth would be 180 in this case when they have got different names again azimuth 180 and when the latitude is less than the declination then the azimuth is north and these conditions will change if your latitude was southern latitude so instead of having it 180 here it will be north Likewise, so when you are observing the altitude at meridian passage, altitude is what from rational horizon to the body, right? What we are actually doing is we are measuring the length of the meridian. This is the length of the meridian, what we have measured. Yeah. So at meridian passage, the altitude would be actually doing is we are measuring the length of the meridian. Now then this length of the meridian we convert it into zenith distance here. Zenith distance, zenith distance. And to that we apply the declination which is here. Declination between equator and the body. And after applying this what we are actually obtaining is the length of the meridian from the equator to the observer and thus the latitude. Now we know that the earth has got two uh, uh, motions, one is it revolves and rotates. Now because of the rotation we see that the bodies are riding, rising from the east and setting from the setting to the west. And then we talked about observer's meridian and observer's inferior meridian in the previous topics when we talked about longitude. The uh, inferior meridian is longitude observed meridian plus 180 degrees. Hang on opposite the observer's meridian. Now, because as I said of the rotation, the daily passage of the body is from east to west. So, during this passage, going from east to west, the body will come on observer's meridian. And 
this particular time this particular occasion when it comes on your meridian is referred to as meridian passage or meridian transit and when it is on my meridian that is on our meridian then we can refer to it as upper meridian passage or upper transit now of course the sun does not stop here it continues on its path keeps on going up after culminating it starts setting it sets then still its uh, motion is continuing it keeps on going round and then it comes on the observer's inferior meridian which is 180 degrees now this particular time when it comes on the observer's lower meridian we refer to it as lower meridian passage or meridian below the pole and at that time the lh is 180 as you can see lh is from observer's meridian to the body measured westward so now it is making an angle of 180 so lh would be 180 degrees when the body is on the observer's inferior meridian at or, or when the body is at its lower meridian passage and then of course the body continues to uh, doesn't stop there again it continues and then next day it's going to rise again and culminate on observer's meridian provided observer is not moving and his uh, meridian is the same at the same time the sun would come or uh, literally the same time it will come on to your meridian next day and as you can see here the celestial body has crossed my meridian twice what we call it one is was my on my upper meridian and one more is at my lower meridian so you have upper meridian passage of a body and a lower meridian passage of a body now we know that the earth is uh, rotating from east to west and because of this apparent appears you know apparent motion of all the bodies is from east to west so we see that the bodies rise on the east and they set on the west now all these bodies are basically moving around on their declination circle cross the observer's meridian here and continue on their path on their declination circle and cross the observer's inferior meridian here so this is the daily passage of the celestial body so you see that the, all the celestial bodies would be going around the pole so all the bodies are circumpolar because they're moving right around the pole but in navigation what we refer to circumpolar bodies that's what we'll come to next because as i said that all the bodies are basically going round the pole if you look at it now this is your celestial sphere i have drawn my equinoctial here now let's consider that there is an observer who's on the equator so this is your observer on the equator p q p dash here is your observer's meridian because observer is here if observer is on this meridian then this would become the observer's meridian in this case i have used this as the observer's meridian and the one which is 180 degrees opposite is observer's inferior meridian now if observer is here the rational horizon would appear like this because as the definition of rational horizon 90 all points 90 degrees from the zenith rational horizon and this is the north east south west of the rational horizon now we know that uh, we see that apparent motion of all the bodies is that they rise on the east and then they continue on the path come on our meridian and then they go and set in the west now here if you see when it is at the equinox observer is on the equinox all the bodies were above the rational horizon and are below the rational horizon equal period or equal period of time now if i take an observer on a north latitude somewhere here and try to observe the motion of the bodies now 
So what do I see here? That they are all above the horizon for different time depending upon what the declination circles are being shown here. Some are above for a longer period, some are above the rational horizon for a shorter period. Now here what we saw that this body did not set. Whereas this one was basically below the rational horizon all the time. So it did not rise. So some bodies, depending upon what your latitude is, are not setting and some bodies do not rise. Here what we had talked about, your meridian, we refer to it as upper meridian and the one which is 180 degrees opposite is called the lower meridian. Now celestial bodies which do not set and you can see them at both meridian passage, lower and upper meridian passage are called circumpolar bodies. So in navigation we refer to circumpolar bodies only if you are able to see them even when they are on their lower meridian. Normally you will not see them because most of the bodies would be setting. Now in certain cases with depending upon your latitude or your declination some bodies might not set. So here we can see that this is the only body which is not set and this is the body which does not rise. So when we said that only the body which is circumpolar we mean is which we can see at both the meridian passage is this body. We are in the north latitude. The declination is also north. So the most important condition for a body is to be circumpolar is that the body has to be having the same declination as the latitude of the observer. Because if the body is circumpolar in somewhere in the south pole, that will be visible only to a fellow who is there in the south decline, south uh, latitude. So the most important thing is the latitude and declination has to be having the same name. So if I say that I can see a body in my uh, at my lower uh, meridian passage being in the north, so definitely its declination has to be north or vice versa. If the body is circumpolar and the declination is north, then your latitude has to be uh, north. Now here I am just showing you the same thing here, observer on the north latitude, an observer's meridian. Now we know what is the altitude, how do you define altitude? Arc above the rational horizon, so NP is your altitude of the pole and QZ we know that is the latitude. Now here uh, another figure here, observers rational horizon, latitude, north. So these are the same diagram put up in observer's meridian and rational horizon. And as I told you that observer's meridian, P, Z, Q, S and here P, Z, Q, S. The other side would become the observer's meridian only if the Z was on this meridian. Now NP, as I said, is the altitude of the pole, and by definition, above the rational horizon, and ZQ is your latitude. Now P to Q, we know pole to equator is 90 degrees. In these two figures, if you see, PQ is equal to PZ plus ZQ, PZ plus ZQ. Now Z to N is again 90, Z to N by definition all points are 90 degrees away from the zenith for rational horizon and Z N is equal to Z P plus P N. So you have these two equations 1 and 2, they both are 90 so they both are equal, 1 is equal to 2 and this is what we get.
Pz is common. So we get Np is equal to Z cube. Np is equal to Z cube. And that is the latitude. Z cube is the latitude. Np is the altitude of the pole. So this is important for you to remember that the altitude of the pole is equal to the latitude. Np is equal to the latitude. Now here, I just told you that uh, all the bodies, they go round the pole on the, along the declination circle with pole as its center. Now a body can be circumpolar when it is well above the rational horizon. Like here, it crosses your lower meridian above the rational horizon comes back to its upper meridian. So, a body can be circumpolar when you can see it upon the rational horizon all the time. Now, if you look at this here, u to x is your declination. Now, p to x and p to x1, they both are equal because p is the center. The body was moving around the pole with pole being its center. So, Px and Px dash, they are equal. And Px is how much? 90 minus the declination. Px from here to here is 90 and declination, 90 minus declination. Np, which we talked about earlier also, n to p is the altitude of the pole or the latitude and NP is equal to the latitude also. What is NP here? N to P PX dash plus NP PX dash plus X dash N So latitude is PX dash is 90 minus declination so it has become latitude plus declination is 90 plus x dash n. So latitude plus declination is greater than 90, right? So for a body to be circumpolar, the sum of latitude plus declination should be greater than 90. And of course, this condition always stands that latitude and declination have to have the same name. Now, if you look at this uh, equation here, what we just uh, got, if I know the declination, if I know the x dash n, which is the altitude of the body, I can always find out my latitude. Or if I know the declination, I can always find out my latitude. So, depending upon, if you can get the altitude of a body, at its lower meridian passage, you can find out your latitude or declination depending upon what is known to me. Now, when the body is on the lower meridian, it forms an angle of 180 degrees with the observer's meridian. So, LHA would be 180. So, as I said, when the body is on your meridian, LHA was 360. When the body is on your lower meridian, at observer's uh, lower meridian, then the LHA is 180. Now, if you were asked to find out the time for lower meridian passage, you can always calculate it with using 180 degrees LHA instead of 360, what we have done in the previous cases. Now, the meridian passage time, as we talked about earlier also, is given to us for a particular day in the almanac, and we can get our time from here. Now, this is what it is in moon both lower and upper meridian passage times are given. Now the reason behind it you can understand was uh, earlier when we talked about it that the moon comes on your meridian 15 minutes later so that, that is the reason that your lower and uh, upper meridian passage times differ. But as in case of sun you can add or subtract 
12 hours exactly and you can come to know when it is come on your meridian here or when it is going to come on your meridian the next day so for sun you can always subtract your 12 hours from here straight away and you can come to know when it is on your meridian on the 19th whereas here it is upper and lower meridian passage for moon is given or you can find it out with this formula using LHS 180 now for stars, as we talked about it, how you go about doing it and if you are uh, using the sidereal day, you can always subtract half the sidereal day to get the meridian passage as lower meridian passage. For uh, planets, it would be advisable to do it straight with 180. Now, the, as I said, the body could be circumpolar when it is just above the rational horizon, always above the rational horizon. Or it can happen when it is just going to skim, just touch the rational horizon and continue. So it is not going below the rational horizon, so it remains above the rational horizon all the time. So the body could be just touching the rational horizon, not going below the rational horizon here, just touching it, going back up. So the body can be, uh, uh, you can see the body either being well above the rational horizon or just touching the rational horizon and continuing its journey ahead. So now in this case, when the body is just touching the body at the rational horizon and just skimming, skimming it and just going up. So if you look at it, the QX again, your declination. As I said, PX dash and PX are equal because this P is the center of the declination circle and Px was 90 minus declination Np we already talked about is the altitude of the pole or equal to the latitude now here latitude is how much Np and what is Np equal to P x dash and P is equal to P x dash and how much is P x is 90 minus declination so latitude plus declination is equal to 90 so what we talked earlier was latitude plus declination was greater than 90 the second case is latitude plus declination should be is equal to 90 so the conditions for body to be circumpolar, latitude and declination have to be the same name and latitude plus declination would be equal or greater than 90. Now here I am just showing you on observer's rational horizon with the observer latitude south. Uh, when I say observer's latitude south, uh, so definitely your equator has to be north of you. And from pole to Q, 90, and your meridian is P, Z, Q, and N. Now Q to N, if suppose I'm talking about the North Pole here, it should be 90, so anyway, I cannot see the North Pole. It will not be visible because it's outside my uh, rational horizon. So, my observer's meridian in this case, P, Z, Q, and N here. And P, S is my lower meridian, inferior meridian. Now, this body can be circumpolar as I just talked to you. When it remains well above the rational horizon all the time, as you can see here. That the body goes around, crosses your lower meridian and back on observer's meridian. Or it just skims the rational horizon and stays above the rational horizon in this case here. As you can see it is moving from here and then it will cross the observer's inferior meridian and back on observer's meridian here. And this is the case when you have a south latitude, north declination. And you will see that in this case, the 
body will always sit. So if you are on the south latitude, body, any body who's got north declination is bound to sit. So it cannot become circumpolar to you. So the most important condition, as I said, latitude and declination have to have the same name as is evident here again. In this case, when you look at it, work it out. Latitude plus declination is greater than 90. And here in this case, latitude plus declination is equal to 90. So, the condition for body to be circumpolar, latitude plus declination greater than or equal to 90. Now, just an example here. In case of sun, in the month of June, you have the maximum declination north. And uh, we, we have, uh, when uh, we have maximum declination north, we call it as uh, north summer and winters in the southern hemisphere. Now, if the observer was on the equator here, this is your rational horizon, 90 degrees to the zenith. And you can see that the body is above and below the rational horizon. Equal time, so you have equal days and equal nights at the equator. Now let us just have an observer and some other latitude here, like 45 degrees here. Now, if you see that the sun remains above the rational horizon for a longer period and below the rational horizon for a shorter period. So you will have longer daylight, longer days here in summers than the nights. Now this, with the same declination on the same day, if we are talking about 45 degrees south, now you can see that the sun is below the rational horizon for a longer period and above the rational horizon for a shorter period. So you have shorter daylight daylight uh, days here in the south on the same day. So you have longer days in the north and shorter days in the south on the same particular day. Now, if we had an observer who is in very high latitude here, north with declination same, you will see that the body remains above the rational horizon. So now it has become circumpolar. Now, this is what happens in Arctic regions that you have all sunlight. You must have heard of, you know, land of midnight sun when the sun does not set. That is what is happening up higher up latitudes uh, in uh, Norway and other places. That in summers, there are certain places where you do not see sunset. The reason is in front of your eyes here. Now, this thing, when will be the sun circumpolar in what latitude on this particular day? So, we know that the latitude has to be equal to or greater than 90 degrees. So, I know the declination and this is what I get. Above 66 and a half degrees, the sun would not set at the time when the declination is 23 and a half degrees. And suppose would be happening in case of similar latitude south. Now, when we are on south latitude, we can see that the sun remains below the horizon all the time. So there will be no light at all. So in Antarctic region, there will be complete darkness during the period when the sun has got maximum declination north. And you'll have continuous darkness from 66.5 degrees south and above. Thank you. We'll continue from here.